pre-trib rapture moment number 21. Question for you if you're post-trib. Will God deceive himself? You say, what are you talking about? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 12 says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Is that talking about Christians? No, it's talking about the lost world. Verse 11, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You say, well, Brian, you know, there are Christians that can be deceived and things like this. Well, I understand that. But you need to understand your position. Okay? You say, what does this have to do with God and, and things? Understand your position here, folks. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 Verse 12 says, For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. As a Christian, you are a member of the body of Christ. You are one flesh with him. Verse 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members of every one of them in the body, as it hath, hath pleased him. And if, there were all, if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. Do you understand that? Some of the brethren try to say that there are many bodies. There are not many bodies. You say many local churches. Wrong. Okay. What there are is many members. Now, if you want to make church a a Christian, a somebody who's you know member of the body of Christ, sure. Yeah, I agree with that. But I don't agree with the buildings. Okay. The buildings are not churches. The buildings are just dead buildings. You know, the the people inside are the church. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes these buildings are filled with lost people. They're not even members of the church. You know, they think they're going to church and they're not even part of the church. Interesting. But you see, there are many members, but one body. So you see, if the church goes into the time of Jacob's trouble, how does that work? God shall send them strong delusion? You say, well, Brian, that's only for the carnal Christians that are, that are uh, that, you know, are you know, struggling with the, the flesh and things. So then they're not members of the body of Christ? You say, well, you know, only the true members of the body of Christ are going to go, you know, we'll go through it and we won't, you know, be sent to strong delusion. Uh, all the true members of the body of Christ will, will go into it and they'll never take the mark or never do anything wrong because all members of the body of Christ are sinless and always accept the truth. Wrong. I can tell you right now, brethren, if the body of Christ went into the time of Jacob's trouble, probably three-quarters to maybe 80% of the body of Christ would take the mark and be damned for eternity? That's the truth. Why? Because the members of the body of Christ don't always accept the truth. There are many times that the members of the body of Christ will grieve the Holy Spirit of God in spite of being born again. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 and 13 says, Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, 
and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You're made nigh by the blood of Christ. That's how you're in. That's how you are part of the body of Christ. Acts chapter 20, I think it's verse 28, talks about God has purchased the church with his own blood. But God's going to send a strong delusion so that only the true Christians make it through. You're crazy. You're out of your mind. The body of Christ leaves before the time of Jacob's trouble. The only people on the earth after the rapture are going to be lost people. And God refocuses his, his attention back to the nation of Israel. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. You say, well, is it possible for a Christian to not receive the love of the truth? Is it possible that, you know, you say, again, you know, well, I, I just think that uh, we're going to go into this time and, you know, Christians, certainly a real Christian, a really truly saved Christian is always going to receive love of the truth, right? Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth... Of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Can Christians resist the truth? Yes. You just saw it. And not just any Christian. We're talking disciples. Resisting the truth. So if we're going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble then that means that a lot of the members of the body of Christ that are sealed unto the day of redemption, according to Ephesians, that means a lot of the members of the body of Christ are in danger of losing their salvation. And if you've seen the uh, pre-trib rapture moment on the order of the Old Testament books, you know that Esther, being a type of the church, there the book about you know Vashti the queen, the Gentile queen, gets put away, and Esther, the Jew, becomes the queen. And you say, why was Vashti put away? Because she was disobedient to the king. Just like the bride of Christ is disobedient to her king. That's what the whole thing's about. You see, the time of Jacob's trouble is about God sending strong delusion to those people who have rejected Jesus Christ. That's what it's about. It's not about the church. Get that thing figured out.